Hello. I have not done a live in a while on TikTok. So I'm going to make a cup of tea. I'm going to sit and work on my accounting. And I'm going to talk sweepstakes, contests, and giveaways. It's Saturday morning. I'm still half asleep. And I haven't done a live in forever. So I thought, you know what? Just pop on here, answer questions, have some fun, and, uh, and just hang out while I teach people how to find, organize, enter, and win contests, sweepstakes, and giveaways. I don't even say that right. I usually have find, organize, enter, and win sweepstakes, contests, and giveaways. Yeah, say that three times fast. That's what I usually say. But I can't work without my cup of tea. And I had a coffee this morning. I usually have coffee. I never used to drink coffee. And then I met George and I started with coffee. Oh, look, we got a glance outside. Look at that. It is frosty. Oh, that's our pool. It looks like a wedding cake because it's all covered in um, snow. So if you have any questions about sweepstakes, I'll answer them. Otherwise, I'll just talk sweepstakes in general. Um, I use the word sweepstakes, but so when I first started, it was contests where I live. And I discovered when I was editing my second book that there's actually there's different lingo. So it's sweepstakes in the US, it's contests in Canada and like India, and it's competitions in places like England, Australia, and giveaways seems to be universal. There's actually a legal definition, but uh, the difference between a sweepstakes, a contest, and a lottery. And that's why um, in some countries you enter contests, in some countries you enter sweepstakes um, or competitions, because there's different laws. Because when something people don't know is that the official rules are a legal and binding contract between the sponsor and the entrant, which can stand up in a court of law. And I've always known this, but it was really exciting to see in the McDonald's documentary. Did anybody see McMillions? Anyway, I think it was in the fifth episode. I think it was the sixth episode thing. In the fourth or fifth episode, they decided to take... Now, I'm sitting on the floor because what I do is I literally spread out... Oh, I can't put this down too low because that'd be weird. Now what do I do? Let's try it. I'll put it over there. You see my little pajamas. That's not good lighting because then you guys get the light from the... That's not bad. That's what I do. I sit here and I sort all the paperwork. So um, in McMillions... Oh, I'm a little crooked. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, in the documentary, in the fourth or fifth episode... Now I went too far the other way. They had... Um, they took them to court, and what did they use in court to prove these guys broke the rules? The law, the broke the law, the actual rules. So rules should be um, court actionable. So anyway, the definition of lottery is, and I have this in my book actually, and I, that's an excerpt from Steve uh, Ledoux's book, How to Win uh, Sweepstakes and lotteries in the 21st century. Um, he, the definition of a lottery is that you pay a consideration for a chance at a prize. And the sweepstakes in a contest have one of those elements removed. Actually, I'm gonna move my little sticker because it's right in front of my face. Oh, maybe I need to, maybe I need to move back or something. Oh, I made it disappear, oh well. Um, I'll put it back. How do I put it back? Uh, silly me. Stickers. Learn to win sweepstakes. Okay. This is life. There we go. There it's back. I'll put it right there. And then I'll sit on this side. I should raise this thing. We'll figure that out later. So anyway, um, so that means you pay like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever for a ticket and you have a chance at a prize. So sweepstakes has one of those removed, which means you don't pay. 
So you, a sweepstakes, you have a chance at a prize with no consideration. And by legal definition, a contest, you pay a consideration and you, to get a prize, but there's no chance. So it's usually judged. So similar to, say, entering the, um, uh, in the United States, they have state fairs where they have, you know, like a bake-off. Uh, so people pay an entry fee into the thing, and then the entries are judged. So there's no chance. It's... Now, in Canada, that's why we answer skill testing questions. Because uh, sweepstakes were made illegal because of the Irish sweepstakes and people were getting scammed. So they made sweepstakes illegal, but companies still wanted to give stuff away as part of their marketing plan. So what they did was, is they made it, you had to a skill testing question, thereby legal definition, it's a skill, not a chance skirting the laws. The lawyers are very clever. So that's why we enter contests in Canada and answer skill testing question because it then becomes a contest by legal definition and not a sweepstakes. Clever. Clever. And then uh, competition is the same as the sweepstakes. It's just a different word for it. And same with giveaway. But I use the words interchangeably. So I'll say sweepstakes, contest, competition, giveaway, and I mean the exact same thing. You find a company that says, hey, we want to give you this prize for free. Uh, just fill out this form or play this game or do whatever or tag a friend or whatever the rules are and you can win a prize. And that's what I talk about. So if you have any specific sweepstakes questions uh, while I work on my accounting, which it's not my favorite activity as a business owner, I must say. But I'm very proud of myself. I'm way ahead. As you can see, the box. Oh, my, yeah, my laundry's behind me too. Uh, the box is almost full. And one of the things I do to, uh, to bless my work is I actually put a little thank you note to the universe saying, you know what? I have a lot of paperwork because I'm doing okay, right? If my business wasn't doing any good, I wouldn't have any paperwork to file or organize for my bookkeeper, um, right? So if you're watching um, and if you have any questions, just um, answer me that. Oh, thank you for the rose. Pastor Paulette wrote, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm down to the dregs of my accounting because most of it's here, and then um, I sort it all out, and then my bookkeep my my bookkeeper's happy. That's always a good thing. So we'll start putting stuff away, and then what I do is, so I have files that I give to the bookkeeper, and then the other thing is too I divide things like this was one specific business trip. So I put all the business trip. Um, receipts in one file and then I'll do an expense report and put them on top so they don't actually have to go through each one and it makes it easier um, for them to go through the files and it costs me less money because I don't have to um, they don't have to like figure out what's in here and go look for things because it's all in an Excel spreadsheet. Oops, we got a couple of receipts that tried to get away. So these trips are actually interesting because this is something uh, about the hobby of sweepstakes that I love, and that is um, conventions. Oh my gosh, this silly sticker. I wonder if I can move it down. Oh, that's better. Not in front of my face. Um, so uh, this year, so right now, so last year I went to the annual National Sweepstakes Convention, which, oh my God, I had so much fun. It was the first one I've been to in seven years between um, either not having the funds, um, being busy, because one of the years I moved, and then lockdown, um, I couldn't go. So for the first time in seven years, I went, and it was in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I had a ball. Oh my God, it was so much fun, like so much fun hanging around fellow sweepers. Like, oh, I, I have my books. I bought yours at the Sage now. Oh, yeah, the Helene's books. Yeah, 
and I'm working on another one for me. And then I'm also going to work, Helene had a publisher and I found out his books and I'm going to be buying his books, or at least I'm working on it and I haven't done it yet. Um, sometimes these projects take time. Wait, what was this drip? Oh, I need another envelope. See, I wasn't as organized. But anyway, so I went to the sweepstakes convention and it's so much fun. I did some TikToks on it, but if you go, it's better to go to my blog and read about all the adventures. Um, okay, uh, Keg, I'll answer your question in a second. So uh, go read about my adventures there. I'll tell you about them after. So Keg, this is a very important question. How do you verify that people are calling legit when you win? Well, first of all, um, most sweepstakes now don't phone you unless it's massive. Um, most of the time they send you an email with release forms attached. So it used to be mail or phone. And then, of course, as email took over, um, you just got them emailed to you now. I'd say 95% are email. Um, I just did a video a few days back about how my daughter uh, entered a radio contest and they phoned her back and she nearly didn't answer the phone because she didn't recognize the number. I'm like, your mother is the contest queen. <laughs> Anyway, she won $500 because she answered her phone and they spun the wheel and she did not win the 5000 but she won 500 and she's really happy. Um, so it's really cool. But here's what you can do. You're going to know, you're going to know that they, um, so for example, you're going to remember entering. Hi, I'm Susan. I'm calling from XYZ Agency. Um, you entered the you know, big brand sweepstakes, uh, sweepstakes name here. Um, you're a potential, I'll explain that in a second, potential grand prize winner. Uh, we just need to verify a few things and then we're going to send you the forms. And, we'll, um, and then when we get them back, you can, uh, and they're filled out properly, you can be declared an official winner. Um, if you're not comfortable with the person on the phone, you can say, can you give me your number? Um, your name, company, phone number. Um, I'm busy right now. I need to call you back in five minutes. And then you can go and look. So, you know, LinkedIn. If somebody really works at XYZ agency, they're going to have a LinkedIn profile. The agency is going to have a page. Sometimes they show all their staff on the page. It's far more easy to verify. Also, they're not going to ask for a credit card number. They're not, it's, you don't pay to win. So if they call you and they say, hey, we just wanna send you the release forms, there's no mention of paying for anything. Now you may have to pay some stuff if you win, like currently there's one radio station near me that's holding a giveaway for trips and it clearly states right on the page that you are responsible for the travel taxes and how much they are approximately per trip per person and they will be asking you to pay that. But that's up front. Like you already know when you're entering that you were responsible for that fee. And yes, they will be asking for a credit card, but you know where it is. Um, so, right? Um, okay, so that's one way to do it. Okay, figured that they emailed. How do you distinguish a legit email? That may be even tougher. Uh, first of all, set up an email address just for entering sweepstakes. One. Two, uh, you can pretty much verify. Again, you're going to remember having entered the giveaway. And again, they're not going to ask for a credit card. You're going to get an official release form. Um, you can search the person. Sometimes their e phone numbers, even in their email, um, or it's an agency you can follow up. It's, it's kind of easy to tell. Um, but the big clue is they do not ask you to pay. The minute they ask you to pay something, block them. You never have to pay to win unless it's part of the rules, as I just stated, like those trips, they 
um, want you to pay the taxes as part of the prize, but you already knew that before you even entered. Because if you saw that and you're like, well, I don't want to pay $400, then don't enter. It's not really rocket science, right? And then there's also stuff like if you're entering for trips, you'll read the official rules and you'll find there's a lot of stuff that they don't cover. Like, um, you know, they, you know, you have to get yourself to the airport and pay for your own parking or Uber. Um, they're not going to tip anybody. They're not giving you now. Sometimes they'll give you like a thousand dollar visa gift card or thousand dollar check to cover, you know, I've seen 500, 700, a thousand more, um, to cover expenses. And then you're still responsible. Like you put the money in the bank or use the card. Um, so you can use that for, you know, tips you have, to, sometimes you're responsible for your own food. Um, sometimes you're responsible, like if you want to go sightseeing souvenirs, all that stuff, they don't cover that, um, as part of the trip, unless it's part of, unless it's in the, included in the package. Like my friend, Tom Cavalli of I win contest, won a trip to Hawaii and part of the package is the group, like, because it was 20 winners, and they had a luau for them, and they went sightseeing, and they had, like, it was part of the whole prize. That was part of the prize. But, you know, their room, the maid service, they had to dip their own maid and whatever. They had to buy their own souvenirs. I mean, that's not covered. So that's how... You can tell, and then Click says, yeah, I like LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn's great if you need to, to find somebody uh, corporately. And of course, these people are all legit. And more, more and more people have um, legitimate um, pr uh, profiles there. So you can t type, oh, Reg Loons. Okay, now Raging Loons. I don't know why in my brain it says Regloons. I have no idea. Uh, you have to go follow Kate. She is awesome. She's a fellow sweeper. Um, one of these days now, she has far too many pets to leave. I think she has like 24 cats and I think there's a dog in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure there's a bird and a fish. I just saw she unboxed a really cool Bissell house cleaner for all those spots. You know, doesn't have a lot of carpeting like our house, but you know. That one carpet, that's where they're gonna that are gonna, are gonna go to. And then it's also good for the couch and everything. That's what's really good about the hobby. That video, she was really clever and she does what I do. She's like, I really need one of these things. And then she was like, Why am I gonna buy it? I'm gonna go and try and win it first. And then she went and searched and found it and won it. <laughs> of course she did. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work. I'll tell you this story. So when I was married to my husband years ago, um, when we first moved into our first house, we had borrowed this old TV. Like it was one of those ones from the seventies. Anyway, it was in like a cabinet and, and we needed a new TV. Well, he went and got an Xbox or something. And I'm like, dude, if you can afford that, we're returning it. And we need a TV. Like, no, so we go to the store, we return the thing, and um, so we're looking at the TVs, and I'm looking at this size, and he saw this big one, da da da, and I'm like, oh, I've lost this argument. <laughs> so we ended up with this massive TV back in the day, and of course it was like this projection, rear projection thing, and so it's like, look at this, I'm spreading my hands like you can see on TikTok. It's so wide, it's ridiculously wide. It's high, it's on a stand, weighs a ton because they actually weighted the bottom so it doesn't tip over. And uh, we get this thing into our house and I'm like, holy cow. Anyway, we bought surround sound like it was like modern. Now I laugh at it, it's so bulky. But um, I remember my daughter and I, so we had it for years and years and years. And my daughter and I, we remember we were watching Murdoch Mysteries, love that show. And uh, the TV just went, Oop, and it died. And I'm like, mm -mm, I am not paying for a TV. I'm going to win a TV. I entered every TV contest I could find for months. After eight, and we had a projection TV, a projector in the basement. 
we had set up like a home theater system. So we had a projector and a screen and everything. So we had something to watch. It's not like we had zero TV. Uh, but not, it wasn't all streaming at the time. So my daughter was little. So maybe, maybe more than 15 years ago. So maybe she was like, four, yeah, 15, 16 years ago. So, you know, Facebook wasn't even around. Um, streaming. And um, I finally, after 18 months, my husband was like, look, you clearly are. TV and he went to Costco and bought one and by then they were thinner and bigger and you know half the price of what we had paid for this thing and uh yeah he put it up on the wall in the family room so we had no TV in the family room for 18 months <laughs> yeah that's that's funny sometimes the, sometimes you just have to give up and buy it but here's the other thing that people don't know um, in the United States, I don't know if, if um, Kate knows this, but in the United States, it's a completely different hobby. It's the country with the most giveaways in the world. And there's more opportunity to win in the United States than in Canada. So if Kate and I did the exact same thing every day, she would win far more because there's more to enter. Um, that said... I, you know, last year had a very good year. I won two trips and a big screen TV. Um, the TV was so big, it didn't even fit in the house. We had to put it in the garage. It's a hundred inches. Like I did a video to show the prize. I had to stand because we put it high up. This is the way the garage is. The garage, <laughs> George built his dream workshop out there. So it's not really a man cave, so to speak. It's, it's a workshop that they hang out in. So it's like a man cave secondary. Um, and so at one point he's like, I need a TV out here. And they had a boxing day sale and I went and I bought him a 65 inch TV for like 500 bucks. I'm like, it's a garage. And they still, you know, he does work out there like big table saws and things. There's a lot of dust. So I'm like, we don't want to spend a lot on a good TV um, because of the dust. So we put the 65 up on this wall and it looks tiny. Like It's a huge TV. How can it look so tiny? But the garage is like 26 by 38 or some crazy big garage. It's, there's tiny war homes in our town that are smaller than the, this garage anyway. Um, so he, you know, he bought a sound bar for it and it was, it worked. You know, we had the internet, we bought the boosters so the internet reached uh, all the way out there, no problem. And um, it was fine. And then I won this TV. And he always complained, it looks a little small. So I won this TV, and it was going to be the entire wall in our living room. And it wasn't going to be comfortable to watch it from all the different angles. So I'm like, oh, my God. So we stuck it in the garage. Well, it fills the wall beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. But we put it really high up. It's like, I don't know, 14 feet in the air or whatever. 12 feet in the air. And... Um, on this wall so to show off the prize I had to stand on a ladder to film it's crazy big and I'm like this room is dusty this is a short throw laser projection tv you could not and it wasn't inexpensive either you cannot get this thing dusty so cleverly you know how when you get electronics there's usually a styrofoam or something that comes molded to the item so that it does not move inside the box. So he kept the top part. So after he's finished watching and everything, we put the styrofoam back on to keep all the dust out of it. Cause I'm like, yeah, it's funny. I finally got the TV I wanted, but it's not even in the house. But what we did do is we brought that 65 inch TV that was in the garage in here. And we had like a, I don't know, 50 inch and we, it's in, I don't know, where is it right now? Maybe it's just stored in the basement. Um, you know, we'll find a home for it. Yes, um, there's so many sweeps in the U.S., but I always wanted to move to Canada. Yeah, here's the, here's something interesting. In Canada, we pay, pay no income tax on any winnings of any kind. So if I won $50 million in the lottery, it's all mine. Oh, my God. You know what I read yesterday in the paper? Or not the paper. 
It's on a news outlet that came across my <laughs> Facebook feed. And I sent the information over to Timothy Schultz, who does the Lottery Channel on YouTube. I said, you have to interview this girl. The youngest grand prize lottery winner in Canadian history. She's 18. She won $48 million on the first lottery ticket she ever bought. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You can go Google it. $48 million. She's 18 years old. First lottery ticket she ever bought. Boom. Oh, yeah. I saw the headline. It was super late last night. It was like midnight. So I just sent it off to him. Her grandfather told her to do it. Yeah, that was faded. Quick pick. Of course it's a quick pick. Of course it's a quick pick. Yeah, that's faded for sure. That's her destiny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know crazy right anyway so I hope he interviews her because that's going to be a great story um I mean that usually doesn't happen yep she wants to be a doctor good for her well she can afford to go to school now <laughs> anywhere in the world she wants how how awesome anyway she, we don't pay a lot taxes on lottery winnings of any kind so all my american friends go oh you're so lucky i want to come to canada i'm like no no you don't understand you can win you can um pay you can um enter so much more and win so much more in the u.s and the types of prizes are bigger etc um that i i always say i would happily pay like give uncle sam my cut of prizes um, to win like my friends do in the States because it's just not the same. And it's funny because when I was single for a while and I was talking to Tom Cavalli in the States, I kept saying, do you know, I need to, to date an American. Do you know anybody? Um, but, <laughs> and of course I met George super happy, but not an American. So I can't win. Maybe, uh, maybe one day I'll just move down there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I have to find out what the rules are. Like if I have a, if I end up buying a house or something in the States and I become a resident, can I still enter? But I think I have to have a SIN number. I have to figure that, or, um, and we call them SIN in Canada. You call it social security. It's the same thing, but different name. Which state? Oh, any warm state. <laughs> any state that I don't have to wear. Okay. It's minus 20 Celsius here right now. I can't remember what that's in Fahrenheit. Zero here is 32 in the States. So just figure that out. It's cold, like cold. So you don't like minus 20. No, I was, I think I was born in the wrong country, honestly. I belong in a place. We won that trip and went to Mexico in October and I kept walking the beach going, talking to the universe going, okay, how do I live like here six months and there six months? Like, how do I live in flip-flops all day long? I would love that. Um, just, you know, Mexico, like it's so nice there. Oh my gosh. And so warm. And I could, I thought this would be the perfect life. You get up early, go for a walk on the beach, come back, have breakfast, work for a few hours on your computer, go for a swim, come back, work for a few hours, go for another walk on the beach, come back, have dinner, maybe work for another couple hours. Like, oh my God, what a nice life that would be. Sit up by the fire or something, then go to bed, do it all over again tomorrow. I-T-I-N number. I have an E, I have an E-I-N number. Uh, for my business. So I wonder if is that I wonder if that's the personal version of it. I'll have to see. Anyway. So yeah, that's I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, there's so many more sweepstakes to win in the States um, than in Canada. And the prizes now think okay, so we have 36 million people in Canada. My last check at the <laughs> statistics. And there's 38 million people in California. That's just California. So there's 2 million less people in 
all of Canada than just one of the United States. So think about the marketing budgets. You know, you have Coca-Cola Canada, Coca-Cola United States. If you've got a marketing budget, it's going to be much bigger in the United States than it is Canada. It's not rocket science. It's a numbers game, right? So look at this. I'm sitting on the floor talking. I'm not doing any of my accounting because this is way more fun. <laughs> okay, I should do a little bit. So yeah, so there we go. I gotta, and I realized I put this in a folder. I should have an envelope. So I need two more envelopes. So actually what's really smart when I do my accounting, and then I divide everything out. So I put what it is and then I put a note for my accountant and then I'll staple an Excel spreadsheet to it when I do that. Oh my gosh, I need like four. And one of the trips was actually um, that, I, that I'm putting out there is, um, when I went to Texas to Helene Hatzel's house to get her library and her things, part of me wants to go back and visit Dyke and all that. Because it was so much fun. Look at this. I got Amazon.ca, Amazon.com. I have expenses. I have these sticker. I have these labels. I think I had snagged them from Helene's house. They don't stick very well anymore. But stuff had been left in her house for 12 years. So, Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I got my cup of tea here. You know what I think I need to do? I think so. Then I do each month in an envelope. So I just buy a box of these hundred and, uh, and divvy them all up. So I'm going to move you guys back a little. Okay. Now you're on one of the trip folders. <laughs> this is my life, right? <laughs> in my snuggy pajamas. Oh, this says road trip to Texas. Why is this out here? Now I have two envelopes on a road trip to Texas. Oh gosh. See, this is what happens when you April, May, June. Okay. Now I gotta fix that. So I just do this when I'm running out of space. Okay, let's do it here further over. So it's good, it makes it easy. And I recommend everybody do this, actually, even if you don't have a business, because how many times have you bought something and then found a sweepstakes that you need a receipt for? I remember a couple of years ago, Cheerios was giving away Fitbits, and we had bought a bunch. And I'm like, hey, George, where's that receipt? He's like, oh, I threw it out. We don't need to keep the receipt. I'm like, oh, my God, keep all your receipts. And, um, yeah, it's a little weird you're so far back. I don't like that. I'm going to stretch my legs out, too, because now I'm sitting on my ankles. <laughs> yeah, this is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> and then we get this stack of receipts that I printed off. Look at this. This is only a fraction. Well, it is good. To, so anyway, keep all your receipts because you just never know. So first of all, there's something I call sweepstakes stacking. So for example, um, it happens a lot with gas stations. So the gas station will have sweepstakes. So you go in and you got, you, we're buying gas anyway for our cars. So go to the one that has a giveaway. And usually you have to tie it to your loyalty rewards. So you turn around and buy the gas. It's already attached or you scan your thing when you go in and pay. You're in that giveaway. Then, um, actually, if you go to the website and read the rules, sometimes they have a no purchase entry option. So you can do a couple of those too, increase your odds of winning. Then, um, sometimes like I'd go and I'd see a sign they were having like, buy two of these chocolate bars and you're into another sweepstakes. So while I go in to pay for my gas, I grab a couple of the chocolate bars, scan my card, now I'm into win another one. You can go check those rules, do another couple of no purchase entry options more chances to win. Then what happens is the chocolate bars I would always buy, especially in the summer, have a giveaway on them. So now the sweepstakes for the chocolate bar I enter. So three giveaways, one purchase. Um, and then I, you can go to their site and also do some no purchase entry options. Depending on the giveaway, chocolate bars is a tricky one because if I go to the dollar store, 
I think they're 87 cents or 88 cents for a chocolate bar. A stamp in Canada costs a dollar. Why would I mail away for the no purchase entry when I could go to the dollar store, get the chocolate, enjoy the chocolate, be in to win for less than a stamp? So no, I usually do. But if it's a more expensive item, then of course I, I um, do the no purchase entry. So then a lot of times then at the bottom of the receipt, there's another giveaway that you can go and enter. So that's four giveaways, one purchase. So it's like stacking your sweepstakes. Always maximize your opportunities to win. But this is why I want people to get in the habit of um, always keeping your receipts. Always, always, always keep your receipts. Because if you turn around and you buy, I don't know, a certain brand of something, and the next day you find the sweepstakes, but it started a week ago, that purchase, you could, a lot of times they're asking for the receipts. You could qualify to enter. And you don't want to miss that opportunity. So you don't want to miss that opportunity to win. Look at this, I'm actually doing it now. You don't want to miss that opportunity to win because you were um, not keeping your receipts. And then for receipts that I can't claim, I literally have a full uh, envelope here. You can kind of see it. I write on it, unclaimable receipts. And the reason I do that and this is what I told George when I first started with his helping him with his accounting. Is you keep every receipt and he goes, well, what if it's not important? And I go, that's fine. But you, I can't tell you the number of times that I've kept a receipt. I don't know, for shoes or for, you know, an appliance or something. And what do you think happens? I've got the thing on some envelopes here. It probably isn't a good idea. Um, something will happen with that item. And I'll need the receipt to go and exchange it or return it or get it repaired. I have the receipt. I just go through that unclaimable folder and I have the receipt. Or, um, you know, you just, oh, that's not the right date. I'm doing the date in the corner, not the date of the thing. When did I, oh, it is November. It's in the wrong month. Um, so you have to watch where you're going uh, with your items because you never know when you're gonna need it. It's amazing. Oh, I think this was December. It's amazing at how, where is, it? oh, that actually should be in an envelope or a folder. You never know when you're gonna need it. So that's why you get in the habit of asking for every receipt and that way, if something's important, you'll have it. And if it's not, it doesn't matter. Because I keep all my receipts for like seven years and then I shred them all. And actually lately, uh, I don't always shred them. Sometimes I just, um, we use them for a burn pile in the summer. We use all the <laughs> We use all the paper as fire fire starter in the summer <laughs> in the fire pit. Okay, so she says her work has so a random draw for ten thousand dollars when we sign up to so many credit cards. Any advice to win? Where do you work that has you signing up for so many credit cards? That sounds like a bad idea. Um, I would first read the official rules of that giveaway to see what all the parameters are and why they want you to sign up for so many credit cards because that just seems a little bit sus to me. Like, oh no, we sign up people. <laughs> I get it. Actually, that is a... Um, that is a that is a um, a workplace giveaway. So it's random draw, but it's so many credit cards. Does each person have to sign up for more than one, or can they just? 
Um, so here's what I do. All, every giveaway, even one at work, should have official rules, should have proper rules. So find out from who's in charge of the giveaway what the rules are and how you ma how you can maximize. We have to get at least five to be in the draw. Okay. So have you been lucky enough to get five yet? Um, basically, I would actually kind of use Helene Hadsel's technique of focusing on um, focusing on your um, yeah, where's September. I would focus on getting the maximum number of people. So your job is to sell. They're doing it as a sales contest, right? Because they basically want to sell as many products as they can to make the most money. It's their business. So what they're doing is they want to entice the staff to sell more. So they offer a prize to help you, to encourage you to do better, to do better. I shouldn't say do better. To do more. So you want to focus on maximizing the number of entries you get while you're helping people because you're not just randomly selling credit cards because a credit card can help somebody in their life. So just envision all the people you can help by increasing their credit because they can use that in positive ways always think of it in positive terms don't think oh my gosh i'm getting getting all these people to sign up for credit cards now they're going to be in debt and they can't pay and all this negative stuff no think about it i use credit to advance my business i couldn't function without a credit card when, when i was with my husband and we went bankrupt like i don't know 15 years ago it was a fiasco anyway um I was panicked because how was I going to run my business? Because um, oh, it's a scrap piece of paper. I don't know why that's in there. Um, think about it. Domain hosting, you put on a credit card. How was I going to pay for this? And um, what I pay on my credit card, I pay for my domain hosting. My domain name registration because you got to renew it every few years. Um, I use a mail service. Uh, right now, I offer a freebie that I use through BookFunnel. Like all of my businesses, my Dropbox, my Zoom, everything, I pay for it on credit card. I could not run my business without a credit card. And look how many people learn to win from me and en enhance their lives because I can afford to use a credit card to run my business. So what I want you to focus on every morning is before you go to work, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna help five people today. So you focus on five every day. I'm gonna help five people get credit in their lives so they can advance their lifestyle. They can advance their life. They can help more people. They can run their business. They can get what they need for their kids. They can get air miles. Like I also stopped using my debit card and started using my like air miles card. My air miles credit card. I pay for everything. I learned this trick from my mom actually. And I pay for everything. And then I pay it off at the end of the month and I've gotten all those miles. So I already have enough for one free plane ticket somewhere. Yep, oh, George is home. I heard the door. So we have... Oh, this is accounting. Oh, it's hey. Corey. Hey. I'm doing a TikTok live. I'm answering questions. It's a great way to do it, right? So focus on how you're going to help people. Every day, you're like, I'm excited. I'm going to help five people today. So you can get an entry every day. Just focus. And then um, then the money, and think about all the good things that you can use the money for to enhance, like move you forward. And then that's how you're going to do it. And since I'm sitting in the middle of the living room, everybody's just come home. I'm going to sign off, and uh, we'll do this another time. 
But go check out my blog because I've been doing a lot of updates on my website and um, I've posted a lot of, refreshed a lot of stuff. 